episode number 15. Uh, got, a, got a new guest that some people may know, some people may not. Uh, if you grew up in the Greenfield community around, uh, you know, 2000 to 2003, 2004 range, uh, this dude was lighting up. Uh, not just the football field, but also the basketball and baseball field as well. Uh, local local guy now off uh, down south in the sunnier parts of this uh, beautiful United States of America, wishing that's where I was at myself. A uh, guy by the name of Josiah Sears, who uh, was a 2003 graduate from Greenfield Central High School. Um, like I said, he, he, he went on to play football at uh, University of Indiana, or Indiana University, what people would like to say, rather than University of Indiana. Um, and from there, he, he, he's been doing some amazing things, got a co been doing some coaching, got some chances to play um, at the professional level, and is now uh, doing some great things with his family and local community down south to, uh, you know, giving back coaching, which I think a lot of people who play um, a sport at a high level at some point get into coaching. And, you know, obviously I have done the same exact thing. And a lot of people like you are inspirational, and I think that you're going to be a phenomenal guest for, for not only just the youth, but coaches and also the, the general public here in Hancock County uh, to learn also about um, some, good, some good news that you got going on in your life as well. So, uh, Josiah, I appreciate you taking time out of your day to uh, hop on the show this afternoon. Absolutely, Mitch. I appreciate you. Thank you. Yeah, no problem at all. And I guess to kind of get started, uh, you know, I talked to you about the context of this podcast and kind of what my whole uh, mission is behind it and to dive in to see, you know, talk about who you are, where you came from, you know, you were in Greenfield and then after you graduated Greenfield, you know, life changes a lot for, I think, a lot of people once they get into college and then, you know, on with their family and life. It's amazing how uh, sports have changed my life in different ways and you're a big advocate as well. So if you wouldn't mind, get us, get us going and kind of give us a little bit of background of who you are, where you're from uh, sure. and, and where you're at now in your life. Yeah, so obviously grew up in Greenfield, uh, spent my whole life there. My mother grew up in town and, and uh, yeah, came back after college. She and my dad met at Indiana Central, which is University of Indianapolis. And, and you know, I was born there and, and raised there and uh, played three sports, played a bunch of sports growing up. I think the high school said you can only play three by the time I got there, which was a little disappointing because all my buddies were soccer players, but uh, had... Um, you know, had a really good experience, uh, and, and, you know, you think you're doing well and, and you know, uh, running, running for some yards and scoring some points and all those sorts of things. And uh, then you get down to – I got down to Bloomington and, and walked on, actually, at that football program because I was convinced I was good enough, but they wouldn't give me a scholarship out of high school, but let me walk on. Uh, had recruited me, called a preferred walk on. I'm, I'm sure now that I'm on this side of it, that doesn't mean a whole heck of a lot, but at that time it meant something to me. But uh, – Anyway, I did that, and, and it was, you know, eye-opening to go from, you know, Greenfield, which is a great place, but uh, there's a lot of people coming from a lot of different places, not only across the state, you know, the Center Groves and Carmels and Warrens of the world to, you know, New York and Florida and Georgia and all sorts of, you know, uh, bigger schools, bigger places, tougher environments, if you will. And so it was eye-opening experience and, and awesome and, and challenging. I mean, playing football there – Probably, uh, I would have said until about three months ago, was the hardest challenge I've ever faced in terms of um, just staying the course. And, and what I learned about myself in terms of building mental and physical toughness to endure that, to earn a scholarship, to get to playing on the field, to you know, having the opportunity to be a team captain and win some letters and you know, get some awards like that. That was, that was a special experience. I think the um, what happened on the field was awesome, but what happened in me personally and mentally because of just the stress and adversity I had to face to go through that has, has certainly shaped me as a man. Uh, and I'm grateful for that. I think, you know, somewhere in my third year in school, I figured, I mean, I really want to coach ball. I was in the business school down there uh, at Indiana and, and wasn't loving it terms of you know finance and accounting courses but really love the football side of things and I think the thing that was missing for me though were um, coaches that intentionally invest in our lives as players you know via just being real and authentic relationally to help us grow as men we had that in small spurts but there wasn't a ton of intentionality I wouldn't have been able to articulate that at that moment but it, you know it wasn't one of those things where, you know, like Tom Allen down there now, his catchphrase is LEO or love each other. Like that, that wasn't the answer. And, and, you know, that fits me a little bit better. Uh, personally, I think, 
you know, I love that I went to Indiana and was there, but that wasn't an environment where I was like encouraged and, and felt loved by my coaches. And, and so I think in me, it was like, well, that's how I want to be. I want to do, even then I knew, all right, the way this is being done is good, but I think it could be done different and maybe better. And like, I want to go do that. Um, right there, I want to pause because, you know, in about 2007, uh, actually, right about race time, it would have been, what is it, 2007? Yeah, 13 years ago, I met this really, really beautiful girl. Uh, and it was like, boom, this is it right here. And so we've been married now like 11 and a half years and we've got two Congratulations. Kids. Yeah, thanks. And so, uh, yeah, our we we our anniversaries in January, but but race weekend, Memorial Day weekend, is always special because we uh, stayed up all night in Broad Ripple on the Monon Trail talking to each other, and it started raining on us, and it's kind of like a movie. And so we like that little minute. That's adorable. Stuff, but <laughs> anyway, um, so I got out of school. I uh, had an opportunity um, to. I, some people say they had a cup of coffee in the NFL. I like to say I had one of those little Frappuccino cups uh, of coffee in the NFL. Or, or they gave me the cup but didn't put any coffee in coffee it. Into it. Just the whipped cream. Uh, yeah, it was nothing. I was like, oh, can I have some? And it's no more. So, uh, but I got a couple of checks. So, you know, I could say I'm a professional player because, you know, they paid me. Oh, you uh, did it. Oh, absolutely. Anyway, uh, yeah, yeah. So, um, I was living in my parents' basement, knew I wanted to coach. Uh, this was like July, June, June, July, of, probably July of 08. Uh, and um, emailed a couple of coaches that I knew, knew Mike Leonard really well, or not, not well at that point, had known him from when he would come down to, to Bloomington to spring practices and really going all the way back to Bishop Dullahan camps when those were a little bit different than they are now um, at Franklin College. So I'd been there and he said, yeah, come on, we'll take you. I can't pay you, but uh, I'll give you a place to live and some food, and you can coach the receivers. And I said, well, I've never played receiver. He said, that's okay. We'll figure it out. And, and off we went. Um, we had a great year, uh, finished like sixth or seventh in the country. We were 11 and two. I mean, it was awesome. Most fun I ever had in my life. And I really went there with the intention of, all right, I'm going to go play arena ball or, or some other professional football organization. But those things all had kind of shut down that year. 2008 was a really weird year. There was just the NFL and nothing else. Uh, Europe shut down, uh, Arena shut down for that year, and there was no minor league system at all. So it was like, all right, I get it. Uh, I'm, I'm very much a person of faith, and, and I think I was trying to kick that door open to keep playing, and, and you know, not that it was all about me, but certainly that option wasn't there. So you're doing what you're supposed to be doing is, is what I felt like God was saying. And, and Franklin then hired me full-time, and I became the offensive coordinator going into the second year, so this would have been 2009, which was awesome because Franklin had, at that point, won tons of games, and they were really good and flying on offense. So to be 23 years old and be the offensive coordinator there was something like, wow, how'd I get myself into this situation? Um, and I was terrible uh, at it. Uh, my first year, we weren't very good, and, and I probably called the wrong play about half the time, but uh, learned a lot. And then we had three really good years after that. That took me up to Wheaton College, where I was the offensive coordinator for three years. And that was a different level. That was kind of like going from, not to be derogatory, but the Mid-American Conference to the Big Ten in terms of competition level and how good the teams are and the players and the, and the coaches and just the strategic element of it all and recruiting. And, and, and that was cool because Wheaton's a place that's a Christian school, and I had to go all over the country to recruit. So I got experience. I had the Southeast. And so that was neat. Met a lot of really cool people there and, and all. and then. Two or three years later, I had the opportunity to become the head coach at Benedictine University. Uh, did that for two years. Um, you know, it's kind of, I love being a head coach. That fits me really well. I think just a situation where um, there wasn't an alignment with the school and the direction they were going and the direction I was led to believe we were going and just, it didn't fit. Uh, and you hear coaches talk all the time about how you have to have fit or alignment uh, with the administration if it's going to work. Uh, and that was my experience, just to have that. Uh, and so I got an opportunity to come down here at IMG, uh, which, you know, is, is you know, kind of all the people who know what IMG is. It's kind of like Disney World or whatever for sports. And so um, exciting opportunity, travel all over the country, you know, best high school players in the country on both sides of the field every, about every time you play. Uh, and it was really unique and really awesome and had some really cool opportunities to build relationships with some great people that are coaching in the you know, high college and you know, elite college schools and 
uh, professional coaches and all sorts of just really neat connections there. And then uh, head coach got let go and, and brought in a guy who's an offensive coordinator person to be the head coach. And so who's the first person they're going to get rid of, the guy who calls plays because the head coach is going to call the plays. So uh, that's, that's life in the, in the world of football. And then the coronavirus hit and, and nobody – Nobody's hiring, and who even knows football is going to happen next fall. So that's where we sit. Uh, and, you know, you have those moments of, of that happens, right? Life happens. So many people are dealing with that, and I'm not making light of that situation because, you know, it's really tough. But, but you know, we all have an opportunity to respond to adversity. And you go back to, you know, my college experience. Like, I thought that was really hard. Well, that one is hard as not having a job and having two kids and a wife you got to take care of, and that's real life. And, um so what I've done basically with my time is, is expanded a, a leadership curriculum that I created for my football team that really goes way back to just a desire I had to grow as a leader and, and, and really find the magic sauce or, you know, what is it about leadership that really uh, inspires people and, and why does was one coach or, you know, leader able to get a group of people to run through a brick wall uh, so to speak, but another guy just really doesn't inspire anybody to do anything. Like, what is that? Um, and I read a lot of books and went to conferences and learned as much as I could. I went and got a master's degree in leadership just because I, I wanted to add that to my arsenal of stuff. Uh, and one of the things along the way that was really good for me was I took on a um, basically building a character development curriculum kind of in each training camp starting at Wheaton. And so basically what we did, we had a character quality that was a word of the day. That was our word and, and everything about that day was about that word, whether it be, I don't know, finish or at positive attitude or, you know, any number of things. And I, I stole most of it, to be honest, from Mark D'Antonio, who was at Michigan State. I got a book of his and that had been rooted in what Jim Trestle did at Ohio State. And he wrote a book called um, like the block O of life, which was about what he did at Ohio State to, to train his guys from a character standpoint. Apparently it didn't work because they were, you know, getting tattoos for free and driving cars and stuff. <laughs> I'm kidding. Hey, kids do what they do. Uh, anyway, uh, so that that's where it all rooted in. And then 2017, I felt, well, I, I want to stop using other people's words. And so basically I just wrote it out longhand, and it essentially was about a 50-page letter uh, organized by word of the day through training camp to my football team. And, and at that point, basically I divided it into three categories and it was, all right, we're going to focus on how to become a great, great teammate. Then we're going to focus on what mental approach do we need to take to football in our everyday life. And then we're going to focus on how we treat other people uh, and progress kind of level by level. And I created a system for leadership development in that that was for one year, but also for a four year career for a football player in the program. Uh, so then I lost my job four years, three years later, or whatever. Uh, so I basically expanded that into an entire book uh, written to any coach in any sport in any place where, you know, they can take it and say, hey, this is great. I want to create my own system because I think any sport coach needs to have a system for leadership. And, and my style is really it's, it's character training is what we're doing. We're talking about specific life characteristics that you need to just function that transfer into leadership, but transfer into the team set, you know, the team segment and team environment and just kind of putting that all together. And, and coaching is a platform to shape the lives of the people you coach. Uh, and so, you know, I just want to be intentional about it, encourage others to be intentional about it. So whether they take my system and just dump it down in their program right on, uh, or if they are inspired to then do their own thing right on too, uh, that's, that's just, you know, kind of what inspires me and what I want to do. And I think as I've aged, you know, calling inside zone or power or throwing a bomb has become less exciting to me as seeing somebody light up because like the, the, the trigger flip form or the switch flip rather. And, and they get it like, Oh, like if I treat other people with respect or I show my teammate that I genuinely care about him, like, Oh wait, he like actually works harder. And, and then he is inspired by me. Like, Oh, that's leadership. Yeah, that's it. Like, right. I think it's, um, it's kind of, so, it's kind of cool. You say that because it's, and I, I think you're, you're hitting home with, with things that affected me um, as myself, not just as a player and how I was coached and grown up and taught um, by, you know, 
with my cousin who's in plays with the MLB. There's Jake Fox with my my uncle, my dad, my brothers who I grew up with that all played baseball at a high level, and then the coaches that I have that that have coached me whether it was in high school or at college uh, when I was at Ball State. Um, and then when I decided to go, you know, start coaching myself, you know, freshly right out of school. I mean, 22 years old, I'm ready to start coaching. Um, you know, it wasn't okay. I can't wait to go out and win as many games as I can. You know, it's not. There's a bigger picture. Everything with it, um, even pr at the professional level. I mean, those guys who understand there's a bigger picture to it are probably going to have more success on in the future than the guys that you know are signing those million dollar contracts, you know, twenty million dollar contracts a year, and aren't putting the effort for themselves mentally and uh, f for other people. That's really going to put them down the wrong path moving forward. Forward. So while you know, I. Last year, you know, I kind of I kind of went through some rough stuff um, in life myself. But coming to January, I'm like, okay. I was sitting there to think, thought a lot. My wife was working nights. She, she's actually still back working nights now again. Uh, so I had a lot of time to think at night. And w while coaching and what I coach my kids is, you know, you kind of have your leadership style. Um, there's four things that I try to tell my guys day in and day out. There's four things that you can control day in and day out, no questions asked. Passion, enthusiasm, attitude, and effort. Those four things. Those are four things you can control when you step onto that field, in the classroom, in your work environment, in your life. Four, those are the four things. Well, thinking about that, you know, and thinking about the years that the past year that I had had, I'm like, okay, I'm teaching this stuff, but I'm not living my own personal life that way. Right. So it's almost like, hey, I'm teaching these or I'm coaching this way. Why am I not living the way that I'm coaching other kids? That just one doesn't show. Uh, it shows a lack of influence to them, but also it's affecting me and the people I surround myself with. So I, I commend you on that because you as a coach, I think myself, coaches, I think, lose track of the, 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 the fact of if I'm going to coach one way, I can't live my life or, you know, put myself down a path that I'm not, that I'm not living life day to day. Absolutely. hundred percent agree. And, and kind of the, the premise of my system started exactly where you're talking and, and, and one thing's I, one of the things I remember forever, and I've said this, so I'm not casting stones that people have said this, but coaches who who stay to their players, get them up at the end of practice or practice, or a game is going poorly. Hey guys, we need more leadership on our team, or we need more accountability in this group of people. And I've been that guy, uh, but I, I backed up from it. I said, hold on a minute, like the kids, people, it doesn't matter. You know, they're five years old or fifty years old telling somebody we need more leadership or we know your accountability is, uh, is, is literally like telling them nothing. Uh, and and I, I need to come up with a good analogy for that, but I will next time I talk to you. But you know, what, what we need is to teach them how. Uh, and so where I started was, okay, what's the driver? What do we need? Well, we need leadership. All right. Well, that's pretty a general statement. And, you know, you say, hey, what is leadership? And say, throw the sort of some synonyms on it. <laughs> synonyms, synonyms on a grease board. Uh, you're going to get a bunch of different things. They're all basically going to be the same word. And a lot of times that word kind of gets boiled down to accountability or influence or something along those lines. And so I said, okay, what we need to drive is accountability. And you go to into most team rooms in the football world and probably other sports too. Accountability is going to be on the first level of the pyramid that they have because everybody adapted the John Wooden pyramid of success. And I'm right on with that. I love John Wooden, but I don't think accountability goes in the bottom. I think, I think if you put it on the bottom, you're expecting people to come in without building a relationship, without, without showing who they are, being an example from a work ethic standpoint, showing how they care about their teammates, a myriad of other things. You're expecting accountability without the things that actually drive accountability. Uh, and so what I've created is, okay, accountability is where we want to get to. And how do we get to accountability? We get to accountability by having a team full of coaches and players who live their life with disciplined character. Okay, so let's define what disciplined character is and then back our way into what are the character characteristics, excuse me, that we want to see. And so basically I took 12 characteristics that I believe make a person of disciplined character so that that person can be an accountability driver in an organization. Uh, and that is a team, whether it's football, basketball, baseball, probably not golf, just because I, I don't, I know how to play golf. Some say it some days, some days not, but basically that's just a mental battle. So it's different, but certainly in a, a business and a, 
a school and a teaching environment, like whatever it is, like that's what people want to see. It's the age old idea. Well, I want to see a sermon before I hear one. Uh, and I don't want to, you to tell me to do something. Uh, if you're going to be inconsistent with that in your own life, you know, get the log out of your eye before you tell me about mine. So, uh, that's, that's where it's all rooted for me and kind of how I've created my system and working to finish it and get her published. Cause that's a process, but, uh, yeah. Do you, do you, do you have a name for it yet? Do you have, do you have do. a title title for the book? I think I told my wife and she looked at me like I was dumb. Uh, but it, it's long character leadership. Uh, is the main title, character leadership, because I don't know anything out there that's like that. I kind of worked at it for a while to to see that, um, and I, I can't find anything that's that, so I wanted to be a bit unique. But uh, So it's character leadership, but then you know a subtitle of uh, a system for leadership development through intentional character training. So that's kind of what it is. We want to develop specific characteristics that make a person a leader and develop develop the leader from a character standpoint holistically again so they drive accountability organization yeah we'll, we'll, whenever whenever that book gets published you guys are getting close to that uh you know let me know we'll, we'll get you back on we'll talk more dive in more about the book and kind of what you guys i think that'd right be really really cool and we'll we'll promote the crap out of it and uh, maybe maybe give a couple of books out and i probably that's, that's probably out. about time you're gonna need sponsorships i'm gonna have to pay for that that's <laughs> <laughs> yeah no no live no live or no free ads no free ads i'm kidding um but, but i guess it, it, Looking back at the word leadership, I, I mm -hmm. guess we might get asked this question a lot because um, leadership in a lot of people's minds looks different. If you could, if you could form, and you may not, and that's okay if you don't answer that question. This, this question, and I, I like to put the guest on the spot, but if you could put right leadership in a two two sentence, uh, in two sentences, in your eyes, what would that look like? Two sentences is tough because I'm I'm more of like a forty two sentence guy. Uh, <laughs> But um, go ahead, let it let it ride. I I think I think it boils down to inspiration given to another person to accomplish something that they wouldn't have otherwise done on their own. That's leadership. I agree, uh, and that that can be positive, that can be negative. You can lead a person to accomplish something great, and you can lead a person to smoke weed. Uh, doesn't matter. But you're giving inspiration to another that they wouldn't have come up with on their own, or or certainly didn't have the capacity to finish. Uh, without that inspiration so i like that i like that that's like josiah's that. definition if i write a dictionary that's the first word there you go i, I like it and, and i think i think your book probably going to explain that a little bit more in, in, in your pyramid scheme and your 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 tiers of where that floats and where that goes um and you're right with the word leadership with the inspiration because a lot of people don't understand like my this podcast right here that you're listening to right now wasn't just something that popped in my head that hey i'm gonna do this if it wasn't for the leadership and inspiration from somebody else that was someone else's podcast that was put in my ears and then led to a conversation i had with him and then next thing you know it he says hey this is what you need to go try and go do and then here it goes i mean yeah it's not perfect i've learned through the process of these 15 episodes that there's 100 ways to skin the cat you know but finding the way that works best for you and it's more efficient and that's going to drive to get the to get the job done the way you need to. Um, it changes. It does. It changes. And it's, if and it's same thing. I watch other people's videos. I listen to other people's stuff. So I can make yeah. and try to hammer this down to where it sounds and looks and gives. At the end of the day, my biggest thing is hopefully that it can give some motivation to somebody else to where they want to go do something or they they hear Josiah Sears graduate from Greenfield Central High School and he may be a junior at Greenfield right now linebacker uh, not too sure what he's going to do at the next level and the next thing you know he wants to be a coach because he read your book or listen watch you know listen to your podcast whatever it could be right. um, that that to me gets more out of out of something like this than just someone uh, popping on talking about their business and what they're doing because there are great minded individuals like you you didn't know who I was you had no idea what I was about, what I had, what I, what I, my intentions were other than, Hey, I need you to get on my podcast. This, I, I really think yeah. that you're going to bring some positive stuff. And the next thing you know, one thing leads to another, it, you know, it could be a, a great connection and relationship that we're building here. So yeah. I love yeah. that. I, I love that at all. Um, other than the word leadership, you have a, you have a favorite word that you like to use when you coach. I mean, we all have that, we all have that one thing <laughs> where we're spurred in the moment, say something. Um, um, you, you have that one word that you try <laughs> to drive by as coaching. Uh, I think the word that happens that comes out of my mouth the most uh, is very loudly run uh, or finish. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm saying that jokingly, but I think that, that 
it boils down to that's what you got to do to be successful in football. Like it's so, it, there's so much quitting people just God given, unfortunately, and maybe not God given, maybe it's devil given. I don't know our sin nature from Romans. I'm not exactly sure, but I, I think that people, if given the opportunity to back down, they will. Uh, and, and I'm not being pessimistic in saying that. I just think that's reality. I have a, you know, I've coached kids that are going to Alabama and they'll half half heartedly run through the line if they have an opportunity to do it. Uh, and and so I say run and I say finish. And, um, you know, for me as a coach, like I'm super enthusiastic. I'm super loud. I'm super into it and passionate uh, would be the word, I guess, that describes me personally as a coach. I don't really say that word a lot, but I, I just think that, that, you know, those ideas around the game are, are huge. And it doesn't matter what sport you're playing. Like if you're a great finisher, man, you, you can go a really long way. I talk to my kids, you know, they're nine and six. I was coaching my boys soccer team last winter at the Y. And, you know, I basically got, got the kids, you know, around me before each game and said, look, we're going to focus on three things, guys. Um, play as hard as you can all the time. You just run everywhere. Just overwhelm the other team uh, with how hard you play. Easy to say, hard to do, but if we right. do that, they'll quit. Uh, be great teammates and be encouragers. Every time we do something well, boom, high five, love each other. I don't know, we're not allowed to high five anymore. I, I was playing I was playing ball on the beach the other day with some kids high fiving them and I felt like I was breaking the wall. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> be great be great encouragers, be great high fivers. If somebody does something wrong, that's all right. Let's go we'll get them. Let's go. Let's just play hard. Uh, and, and then finally, just, just do your job. Like what's coach asked me to do. I'm going to do that. Right. Everybody in sports and parents and all this stuff, everybody's got their own agenda. Cause I think they got to promote themselves and, and you know, they got to use the term brand. Like everybody got to create their own brand. Well, I want my brand to be, I play my ass off every time I play, you know, right. and that's what I'm trying to teach my kids and everybody that I coach is get, get after it. Let that be your brand. And if your job is not what you want your job to be today, because there's somebody ahead of you on the depth chart. Well, the answer isn't complaining about that person on the depth chart. The answer is working your tail off and trying to beat them out. And if they're too good for you to beat out, go find another position where you can find somebody else you can beat out. Uh, and that's reality of life. Uh, sometimes, sometimes you got to change gears in order to move forward because there's something blocking your path. Uh, and you know that's where I'm at. You know, <laughs> my path got blocked by uh, some people let me go. I didn't, didn't do anything wrong. Just wrong spot at the wrong time, I guess. And then the coronavirus hit, so my path really got blocked on coaching football. So I got to change gears and figure out what to do because you know you got to put food on the table and take care of kids and wife and all those things and so got to be creative and and face the adversity without flinching and and sports teach you that if if your coach uses the platform uh and, and i think that's what coaches have to do they have to be intentional about using the platform and some are better than others i'm passionate about educating coaches to to do it uh because you know a lot of a lot of situations you know, I'm fortunate. Sounds like you're fortunate. Like I had great parents at home that were going to teach me about life and teach me things. But think about the number of kids you played with. And I know the ones I played with that didn't learn a thing at home because, right. you know, mom and dad were working or weren't there or whatever the case might be. So coaches have an extraordinary audience uh, mentally and visually with their players. So if you go back to what you said earlier, like you live that and you are the character model in a player's life and verbally, but more importantly, in how you live, like, you you come in place of that parent and you shape their life in a way that the parent maybe even and can't uh or or is it doesn't want to has has given that away and so it's a it's an extraordinary responsibility to coach somebody uh and, and i hope i get to do it again uh, right, right. <laughs> i guess i guess to kind of on, on your put, put your coach hat on here again i got two more quick questions for you and i'll i'll, I'll let you go um, you know, for, for the kids right now, I mean, it's, it's a tough time, especially you're getting on the high school level and you're, you, when you're coaching on IMG, those guys, I mean, it wasn't just, you know, you're, you're talking about some of the best of the best players and, and scholarship guys that are going to not just your Mac, your mid-major schools, they're going to the right. SEC, some of those big 10, you know, top tier SEC big 10 schools. Um, but even for some of those kids that are, you know, facing that time of it was maybe then their senior year or they're approaching their senior year, not too sure um you know football season's even gonna happen obviously preparation still got to prepare yourself um that's yeah. that's you know step one but uh to put some positivity or some advice to some of those kids uh, right now that are facing that um any any, any yeah. positive information it's tough i mean i get it it's tough like is it going to be there there's uncertainty i don't know i think i've told kids um 
so many times when coaching them, particularly when kids are coming to my office and say, ah, I think I want to hang it up, coach. Like, I'm just, I don't want to do it anymore. And I, my answer or my response was always very similar. Well, I'll tell you, man, you, you, you never regret in life the things that you invest in and pour yourself out on. Like, you never regret that. You only regret the moments where you didn't give it all you have. Uh, and I think that's so true. I look back at my playing career and it's like, man, I could have been better. Like I could have given more effort. I could have worked harder. I could have done this and that. And I'm 35 and you know, I, whatever it's life, right? It's over. Uh, now you got to transfer that to other things, your professional career, your spiritual life, my kids, my family, all that stuff. Like you shift it. Uh, but you only got one shot to play. And, and even if there's no guarantee that you, get to play whatever the sport is next fall, there is a guarantee that you can work your tail off every single day and, and not feel sorry for yourself. And, 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 and I don't even believe in the, well, idea that, hey, uh, I need to work because somebody else is probably working. Well, screw somebody else. I don't care about somebody else. I care about, I care about me. I care about you. I care about my teammates uh, and us. Like focus on, all right, What's my job? Well, I got to get myself in the best possible shape to play soccer or basketball or whatever. And I got to encourage my teammates to do the same thing. And if I can hold a group setting at Riley Park Hill, we run up and down that hill. I've run that hill probably more than anybody in Hancock County history. I, at least I want to put my face on it. Uh, <laughs> I ran up that hill so much. But those types of things, man, like that, you never regret that, man. If you're in the best shape of your life and you don't get to have your fall season, you're in the best shape of your life. Um, and at some point in life, I, I just, I'm not a karma guy, but it's going to come back around for you that you did the right thing. Uh, and even, even if it doesn't, well, you still did the right thing. I, I think if you can hang your hat on, I did what was right. I didn't do what I had to, to make a profit. And I didn't do, you know, just what was convenient to me. I did what was right and what was best and what helped me grow and helped those around me grow. You'll never regret that. Right. Well, that's, I think it's all, that's a great piece of advice. Uh, I love it. Big thing of, you know, I uh, had a, a principal in eighth grade year. I mean, it's obviously the, the, the golden rule of, you know, treat others how you want to be treated and good things will happen to you. Um, but at the end of the day, when you're talking, you know, yourself and your hard work, you got to be, you got to learn to, to, to be the hardest worker by yourself. You can't mm -hmm. determine and can't, we can't rely on other people to make you, make you good. You can't say, oh, well, I didn't have anyone to play baseball or throw catch with today. Okay, well, Greg, grab a bucket of baseballs with 50 in it and go launch them as far as you can in the grass and go pick them back up, put them back in the bucket and throw them again. I mean, there's other ways to do that, which is going to kind of lead me into my, my next question to you. And my I got to say one. something real quick. Sure, real go ahead. Quick. I'm looking forward to your last question. <laughs> I was talking to my kids the other day. I have two, nine and six, girl, boy. And they come out and say, Dad, we throw the baseball with us. And I was literally doing something. I'm like, yes, in a minute, but I can't. Uh, right now I'm doing something. And, and I said, so go out there and throw. And they went in and started looking at the iPad because the doggone school at home, right. iPads, it's all gone by the wayside, all the rules and all the stuff. Well, anyway, I come in there and said, what are you doing? Well, we're looking at the iPad. I told you to go throw the ball. Well, we're waiting on you. No, no, don't wait on me. Go oh. throw the ball. You've got each other, guys. And then they, I went into total dad mode. I'm like, look, I'm an only child. I didn't have anybody to throw the ball with. You know what I did? I dressed myself up and I threw the ball as high as I could and ran and caught it or I shot basketball by myself or I got a tree and tried to hit it with a baseball. Like that's right. what you do. Uh, figure it out. And that's one of the, I think best things about this whole stay at home experience is just coming back to some of the basics of those things. But people, people, I <laughs> go back, people are going to come up with excuses if they can. Oh yeah. You know, as parents or coaches or whatever, if you, if you allow them to live in that, they'll live in it if they can. And, and it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, excuses, they don't matter. No, well, I agree. I, I like that's hilarious. But, no, it's 100% true. And Kyle was on my last episode, him and Jake Fox. And Kyle was talking about how and he's a big league guy. I mean, Kyle's a big league guy. And he is throwing bullpens by himself in his own barn into a net. You don't have a catcher. He's a big league guy. I mean, yeah. if he can do it, you should be able to be able to put that forth the effort too there. Yeah. And, and there's lots of people out there that are struggling with that. Um, and, and I guess going into maybe kind of more of your, you know, life life in general, going through the adverse you went in life, um, you know, and as quick as you possibly can, if you have somebody that's, you know, got a path down path A and path B, they've got 50-50, they, 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 they have 50-50, um, 50 eggs in this basket, 50 eggs in this basket on the, on the path. Um, do you have any advice for helping them decide what path to take? 
I think that's tough. That's um, very tough. And you, you, the easy answer is do what you're passionate about. And I, and I certainly don't disagree with that. That's what I've, I've done for the last 12 years. And, and you like to think that all of our lives end up like movies and you work your tail off for 12 years and you realize your dream at the end of the movie. And um, sometimes that doesn't happen. Sometimes your dream has to change because the opportunity is not there or, um, you know, it may get put on pause for a while. But again, you'll never regret pursuing something that, uh, you're passionate about. And at times that changes. I mean, you may have, you know, two paths and one is, you know, this is my dream. I can't make any money. Uh, and this isn't my dream, but I can make some money. You might need to go down the path that isn't your dream, but I would say supplement the money making path with the dream path. Uh, and so if it really is your dream, if you really are passionate about it, do it on the side until you can achieve what you want to. And that's more from an adult standpoint. I think if you're a kid and you have the capacity and the ability to take your shot, take your shot. Uh, I've told kids, you know, I've had a lot of kids come along over the years and say, hey, coach, I want to coach ball. Okay, that's awesome. It's hard uh, getting there. And they say, well, I, you know, I want to coach Division One football. I said, get there. If you want to coach Division One, or you want to coach the NFL, sell whatever you got to sell and go get in an office somewhere and, post up and sleep on a couch and do whatever you got to do uh, to get to the level you want to get to. Um, and, you know, cause if you're not willing to do that, uh, the, the odds of it happening are, are slim. It's like, you know, your cousin playing pro baseball. Like some people just have the talent. Some people have the right last name too. Uh, when, it, when it comes to coaching, uh, when it comes to coaching, it's got a lot to do with that last name. True. So if you like one, you put in the door. Uh, if not, you better be willing to sleep on a couch and get some coffee and, do some stuff you don't really feel like doing until you get to do something you want to do. Uh, but that's, so it's the same, it's the same, it's the same story, no matter what path you take, you know, you're probably gonna have to do something you don't want to do so you can do what you want to do, or someday you may be able to. Great. That perfect. Would, great. That's great advice. I, I really do. That's great advice. I've, I've had uh, people on from, you know, 19 years old being a number first round draft pick to, um, you know, somebody who's owned a business for 25 years. So I, it's great to have the different, I like asking that question because everybody's going to have a different answer and something, a different advice. Um, but I guess kind of leading into to finishing up the show here in the episode, um, your path is going to continue to grow. And, and I want everybody to, to, to follow you down that path and, and listen and watch and, and hear and read uh, what you've got coming out. So where can people find you maybe on social media uh, to, to continue following uh, your path and, sure. and when that big announcement comes? Yeah, well, um, big announcement. Uh, it's got to somebody's got to be listening for it to be big. I think uh, we'll make uh, it big. <laughs> uh, Twitter, I'm at Coach J Sears. Uh, I don't, I don't tweet a whole lot. Uh, I don't really like social media, but I'm probably gonna have to get used to. It. Oh, he's gonna have to learn. We're gonna talk about that. <laughs> We're gonna have to have a conversation. I know. I just anyway, we have a long discussion about that. But yeah, that that's me. Uh, that's probably the best way. Uh, awesome. I'll make yeah. sure to uh, put put his info mode down here in the uh, in the bottom. I'm sure you know once he gets closer to that time, things are gonna. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're getting a we're getting a website, we're getting a website together too, and and you know I'll have I'll have a blog there and a uh, uh, podcast going with that. I mean, it's kind of it's all got to kind of come come out in, yeah. in stages here, but uh, we're on one building a day, bro. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Well, Josiah, once again, appreciate your time. Uh, this won't be the last time we have you on. Uh, your wealth of knowledge, and I think uh, a lot of people and coaches, uh, kids, uh, dads, parents, I mean, parents is, is, is big too. And, and then, you know, um, business owners, I can take a lot from you and also from your book. I think I, I'm excited to read it. Um, I don't even like reading uh, my ADHD so bad, but I'm going to set myself down to read it when that comes oh, maybe out. Maybe I'll so. do an audio copy for you. Hey, I'll, I'll even, I don't even care. I'll figure something out. But once again, appreciate your time and efforts today, man. And I uh, look forward to staying in touch and uh, appreciate everybody joining the show today. Don't forget to subscribe uh, to the uh, YouTube channel. Go follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, at Inside Hancock County. Go check our website out. It's new. It's up and going. InsideHancockCounty.com for all episodes, information, and uh, deals around uh, the town. So once again, appreciate it. Always remember that you can make a difference and have a phenomenal day.